morning everybody at the end of last vlog i was telling you about this winter front it's an ominous sign it's a sign that winter season is here i can open up these two flaps to let more air flow through or i can close these to let less through i can close it all up it's fine air will still get on the engine but you close it all up when it gets really cold outside it helps keep your uh your cab warm a little more it protects your engine and stuff from the elements of minus 30. it is definitely starting to get cold out here though we slept here near alexandria minnesota the rest area right beside this beautiful interstate so that i could listen to the beautiful sounds of these trucks so i just finished my pre-trip took me a little bit longer than usual because it was cold <laughs> so I have to keep warming up my hands and stuff. Oh, we're going to go to Oak Grove, Minnesota. We're going to unload this lumber that's underneath that tarp. Yeah, it's probably going to be done outside. I'm guessing most places are. I'm going to roll these tarps up, try to get them all nice and tight. That's, gonna, that's not going to be fun. But we're going to do it because that's what we do. And then from there, I don't know where we're going. But we'll find out as we go. So let's just run down the road here to Alexandria. There's a pilot. I'm going to quickly run in there, grab a coffee. Let's get out there. Let's get some work done. Lights are on, lights are on. Wiggle the truck back and forth just to make sure all my brakes are not frozen. They're all going to release. Beautiful. Now we're just going to make sure that the trailer brakes work. Spike them. They definitely work. My trailer's attached to my truck. It's not going to fall off. And they all release. At this time of year, I always take a look to make sure the wheels are turning as well. I definitely feel it by now because it's not icy. But I'm just going to do a visual here in my mirror, anyways, on this side. Yeah, all trailer tires are turning. On this road for 94 <clears throat> kilometers. <clears throat> when it gets uh, really cold out, if you set your brakes too soon before your brakes cool off, sometimes the brake pads can freeze to the brake drum. And then they're stuck in the morning and you gotta go and sort of bang them free. That's not fun. But you gotta make sure that you see that your wheels are coming with you, like a turning. Because uh, if you don't, you're gonna be dragging it down the highway and you're gonna blow a tire, two of them. At the very least, you're going to be creating uh, flat spots on them, right? is sufficiently warmed up. I'm not quite going to be able to get up to highway speed at all by the time I hit the highway here. Put my hazards on, my don't hit me lights. Sorry guys, I tried. Thank you. I'm very heavy right now. I'm grossed out at about 79,500, just below gross, or just below max. <clears throat> I'm gonna go right out here, exit 100. Literally, right around the corner. Quickly grab that coffee, start the day off right, and then we'll be rocking and rolling. I found a spot to park at the rest area last night and I didn't want to go and check, waste time and go check to see if there was a spot here too, because most likely this place would have been full. I stopped around midnight yesterday, or I guess this morning. Usually that means the truck stops are full. I really wish we could just skip the winter season. Wouldn't that be great? But, you know, you need snow for Christmas. That is something you definitely need. 
It would be nice if it would just snow, snow, snow on the weekends until Christmas. Have a nice white Christmas with a nice fresh snowfall on like the 23rd. And then right after Christmas, it can all melt. It can all go away. We have no more use for it. Me and Brett are on the same page with that one. We love snow until Christmas, and after that, we got no use for it. <clears throat> Next. Turn right on Glacial Ridge Trail, scenic Bybee, and then 29. All right. Wonderful roundabouts here. Wisconsin's been, I mean, pardon me, Minnesota's been taking a, a page out of Wisconsin's book with these things. They're popping up everywhere. So those of you that have been asking, my transmission is an 18 speed. So I can split both high and low, which makes it very nice when you're pulling heavy loads up hills and stuff. Helps out quite a bit. I don't think I'd want to go back to a 13. Definitely not to a 10. Oh, 10 speeds are terrible in the mountains. 13 is okay. You can split the, the high gears, right? But I, I like my 18. Pull into one of these spots right here. Nice, right at the front. Right in the front. Just quickly run in for two minutes. I'm just gonna straighten myself out here. Put my four ways on to let people know I'm coming back. There's no backup lights on the back of trailers, which I find odd. I think European trucks often have backup lights, like when you put it in reverse on the back of the trailer too. Why don't we have that in North America? Because when you're behind a trailer, you have no idea if he's in reverse or not. That's why we put our four ways on when we're backing up, right? To, sort of alert people, hey, something's going on here, this guy's in reverse. I think that would be awesome. It would also give light behind the, the whole unit. So you can see where you're backing a little better. I don't know why they don't do that. It is what it is. All right, I'm gonna run in here. I'll see you down the road. Oak Grove is a little north of Minneapolis. I think it's part of the same metropolis area, the same, might, might even be a suburb of Minneapolis. I don't know the details, but uh, I'm up here on, what is this, Minnesota 23, Minnesota 15. Meters, turn left on and at 15 and then turn right at 380 meters. Okay, so Minnesota 15, this way. This is gonna take me into the north end of the city. Still 88 kilometers or like 50 some miles away, so. I left the interstate because this is supposed to be shorter. We'll we'll see if it's shorter. It's shorter by distance, I don't know by time. We'll see. Ah, uh, 23 east, that's our road. Okay. So we just turned on to the 15 north here, now we're gonna take the 23 east. Just a block down. A little bit confusing, but we got our we got our bearings. We know where we're going. So that car needs some help. Thanks.
took that shortcut turned out to be a big detour. I guess one of the bridges was out over a river or something, I don't know, but we had to make this huge detour all the way around that, so it cost me a half hour. That's okay, we're still on time. I've now got my next orders for my next load, so uh, we're doing okay. We'll unload this and we're headed back up to Kenora to grab a load down to Brainerd. So there's no rush. There's a there's always a rush, but there's no like time crunch where someone's waiting for me. It's the just the regular turn rush. Left on Tanrak Street and then approaching destination on the right side in 70 meters. So yeah, we'll get this freight off the trailer, get my tarps rolled up, and start headed up that way. This day has been sort of it's been feeling like it's just dragging on for me, but I think that's because the sun is setting so early. I feel like the whole day has passed already, and I've just gotten started. But still a lot of day left, just not In daylight. Meters, turn left on Tanrak Street and then approaching destination on the right side. In 70 meters. All right, here we are. Okie dokie. Freight entrance. Got your wood for you. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? You all back at work? So they said come through the gate and go into receiving. All right, simple enough. Through the gate and receiving door is just on the right. Okay, beautiful. I'm just gonna park behind this guy. Hopefully he doesn't back into me. I'll give him enough space to get out of there. There's a sign that says stop here, receiving in dispatch office. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. On time and on schedule. 53 minutes from when I parked here to when I had the tarps rolled up, bungees put away, and freight off the trailer. Nice and quick. Whew. It is chilly. Oh, so not bad. 54 minutes now since I got done and talked to you. Ah, oh, there you are. You did good, old blue. You did good. Another happy customer. Another one. Woo! All right. Getting a little nipply out there. Not too bad. Not too bad yet. I'm still wearing a thinner toque. But it's enough that I need my jacket. All right. Hey, right. Karen! We're going, to, we're going back to Kenora. Take me to Kenora. We're going through Rainy River, I think. Well, actually, it might not be worth it to go there from here. We'll see what the route looks like. Okay, so we're going... Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go... Well, Rainy River is a bit around from here. But it's... There's no toll. I have this problem. I don't like paying the toll man. He almost doubled his price at the International Bridge. You guys know that. Or International Falls whatever that bridge is called. And I don't want to pay it. I want to cross for free. I'm a Canadian, I want to go home for free. I don't want to be charged to go home. It's rude. <laughs> for those of you new to the channel, I cross at International Falls in Port Francis all the time. To cross into the United States from Canada, it's free. To cross into Canada from the United States, you have to pay $21 now US. It used to be $13, now it's $21. Just like that overnight they're just like you know what I'm not making as many millions as I would like to let's make billions yeah that ah, probably wasn't like that but still <laughs> now all of us trucks that go through there which is quite a few because we have regular roads going through there you see it in my videos all of all the guys I've talked to we all switched our crossing to Rainy River now because it's no toll so they're actually probably making less money now that they raised the toll Ah, that'll teach them. Maybe, probably not. Nah, probably not. Okay. Oh, let's get out of here. Let's go find a truck stop where we can get another coffee. What? Let's see how much longer it would be to go through Rainy River. Rainy River. 650 kilometers that way. How far is it this way? Little trip. 
679 39 kilometers further but $21 cheaper now would I burn $21 US in 40 kilometers or like 25 miles or so 30 miles probably not maybe maybe it'd be equal but I still don't give my money to the toll man then huh. I don't know man I am like sweating up a storm here I gotta get out of this trucking was just sitting holding the steering wheel <laughs> maybe for you dry van drivers barn door swingers us real truckers just kidding just kidding us flatbedders we actually have to do some physical work let's go let's go got my paperwork signed Maybe, we'll see. We'll see. I always feel good after I get a big job like that done. Rolling up three tarps in the cold, in the wind, not even inside. It makes you feel good when you get it done. Turn left and then, turn left in 140 meters. Maybe I will, okay? Only because there's nothing to the right, okay? It's a dead end to the right. One second here, one second. I won't cut you off, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, light as a feather again. Such a difference, wow. In that 100 was... meters, turn left on Viking Boulevard, CR 22. That was about 46,000 pounds of lumber, plus about 35,000 pounds of truck and trailer, tarps and equipment. Probably a little bit, but I think I got those numbers off a little bit because I was sitting at 79 something gross. Two more from the left. One more Cadillac, and here we go. complete. Operation successful. That's been a good day. I really wish the sun would stay up longer, but it is what it is. It's only 3.30 in the afternoon. Feels like it's 8 o'clock. I know, that's all I ever talk about, right? Four kilometers, uh, turn right on and then 65. I need to stop bringing that up. You guys know that already. I more so say that because I have a lot of followers that are further south, like down near the equator and in other parts of the world, and they don't experience the same differences in daylight hours that we do here. So to them it's pretty interesting that at this time of year the sun goes down so early and then you know in summertime it just never goes away. Just a fact of life for us here, right? Especially us northern people. Minnesota. Both have a Swan River. According to my card and my app, this is where the cheapest fuel is I can get on my route today. I don't need much, so I'll just top off the tank so that I can make it up to Kenora and back down to Brainerd tomorrow. I've also got to deal with my... Uh, My washer fluid on my driver wiper. 
I have winter fluid in there, but it looks like the driver's side is frozen over. It's not spraying. So I gotta figure out what's going on there and fix that. So I recently drained my entire windshield washer fluid reservoir under the hood because it had summer stuff in it, right? I drained it out and I put Rain-X minus 40 winter washer fluid in there. It's good down to minus 40. And then I ran it through the whole system for quite a while to make sure that all the lines were cleared out and that it was replaced with this new winter stuff. And I still have a frozen line of washer fluid underneath my hood. My passenger one is working just fine, but my driver side one is packed full of frozen ice. So I had to go out and get a little uh, lighter. Actually, I went out and got a nice one because I was sick of the lighters I had that wouldn't stay burning. So I went to the truck stop there and I got a new Zippo lighter. Actually, I really like it. It's one of these things here, eh? You have to buy lighter, like Zippo fluid for it too. I learned that after I bought it. I went in and got the fluid. And uh, this will stay burning even when it's a little bit windy. <laughs> or you can just close that and that shuts it off as well, right? That's the, uh, that's the kind I bought there. But, uh, so I used that and I ran it up and down the washer fluid line uh, for my driver's side windshield wiper and had to melt it all from underneath there. But I kept wanting to refreeze before I could get in here. So I fought with it for an hour to get it going. Maybe I didn't clear out the lines well enough. I'm pretty sure I did though. But either way, my, my passenger one is fine. Driver's side one was frozen up. It's, it's not even that cold out yet, but it's my first hardship this winter season. Figured I'd share that with you. At least it's my windshield washer freezing and not my diesel fuel gelling. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take that, yeah. <laughs> Much better to have that. So we fixed it up and uh, hey, now I got a new lighter. I don't smoke or anything, so I don't use a lighter a lot, but it's always handy to have a lighter just in case you need to, you know, light stuff on fire, bonfires. Or uh, when I'm uh, replacing lights and I do that shrink wrap or that shrink tube around it, I gotta heat it up. It's nice to have a lighter that will stay lit even if it's a little windy. So I have this little torch, where'd it go? I'm very disappointed in this thing. Where is it? Did I put it down here somewhere? Ah. I'll have to show it to you a little later. I guess I lost it. Oh, is that it? Here it is. This thing. You've probably seen it at uh, truck stops. It's supposed to be a, like a torch, right? Oh, oh, now you work. Now you want to work. Where were you before? Seriously. Now it works at the camp. Really? I don't believe that. I went out and bought that Zippo because this thing wasn't working. Come on. <laughs> I was gonna show you how this thing was garbage and doesn't work. Well, you could use one of these to heat it up too, but this one didn't want to light for me before. It lit up for like 30 seconds and then it didn't want to light again. As if, as if. Well. I got a new Zippo lighter anyway. Guess I didn't need it. <sighs> We're in Podette, Minnesota, right across the border from Rainy River, Ontario, where there's no toll on the bridge crossing into Canada. I just want to point out that I really don't like tolls. I don't know if you've gathered this or not, but in case you haven't, now you know. Meters, turn right on, International Drive, and at 72. That's a massive Trump sign right there. Apparently this town really likes Trump. That was huge, it was just off in the dark. They should light that up. Couldn't see it. When we come through here during the day sometime, you'll have to see it. It was like a massive billboard. <laughs> we gotta go over the bridge here and then turn right, gotcha. I always think it's before the bridge. In 300 meters, turn right on. International 
drive, NN72. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, it's right. Right by the big fish, remember? We turn at the big fish on the right. It's kind of in the dark, I know. My GoPro doesn't do the best in low light, but it's the best option I have for a dash camera. more money before man <laughs> or or they'll just put a toll on this bridge right yeah that's probably what they do and that's the big problem right <laughs> if they if we all just start going somewhere else and they don't they make less money now they're just gonna find a way to make the money somewhere else they'll probably just put a toll over on rainy river i bet you they will that, that that bridge is a lot smaller though, a lot smaller. So I have my doubts. I don't think they would actually throw one on there. It's it, it's not a commercial crossing either. So it's not like trucks that are loaded can go through there and take advantage of that. It's just when you're empty, you can go through there. At least that's what I think. If anybody knows different, let me know. Can you cross there when you're loaded too? In that case, man, I should ask next time. I, I could probably just Google it. Is Rainy River Baudette crossing commercial? Probably not, but it might be. I'll get back to you on that one in the future. i got to wrap this up, though. It's the next day, and I'm getting loaded, so no time to talk. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to drive safe out there. Think of me, and uh, we want to get home to our families. Keep your head up. Keep your stick on the ice. And pay attention to the road. We'll see you tomorrow.